welcome back to my channel. It's Marikar here. It's been a long, long time, but today I'm going to share with you a bridal alteration video. So I have this lovely bride, and so what I did with the gown is I did some mild size adjustment and also um, changed the neckline. Like I just added some lace on the neckline since it's really like an open V neckline. And since the bride wanted to have the same uh, lace as the dress, and so I took out a little bit of the flare of the gown and put it on the neckline. And to wipe it with water it's just that I know that it's this is like magic um, pen but it would take you know it would take your time to like wash and make it clean And so you will see from the before and after photos of the gown and you will see that before it has a more you know it has a more flare uh, on the skirt of the gown um, but after the mild alteration you can see a little bit of the curves and of course the alteration um, changed the silhouette of the dress um, a little bit um, it's not really major major change um, but it looks good all together Alright, so I have some basic little tips uh, when it comes to bridal alterations. So it is important to have a contract uh, that you are going to let the bride sign. Your contract would um, include the bride's detail, for example, the name, contact number, or maybe address. And then the date of the event or the date of the wedding and the amount, uh, whatever amount you have agreed upon on you would state there like what is the condition of the gown so you should check the gown for rips for stains for dirt are there holes or is it dirty are there dust maybe some missing buttons or something or some accessories and it's also good like if you take a picture of the gown especially like the outer layer of the gown just so just in case you know what happens you have a proof that okay this is how the gown looks like. So when you're starting to do the alteration and you know you're gonna do sewing with the gown or you're gonna do cutting, um, make sure that your hands are clean. Um, since we are working from home, you know, um, we've got to make sure that our hands are clean. We're not chopping onions and then <laughs> we're gonna cut or sew and then the onion smell is gonna transfer to the gown. And that would be horrible. And please avoid putting lotion i know that especially in cold weather it's so tempting to put some lotion especially because our hands are dry maybe um you moisturize it first and make sure that it's dry and and clean but never touch a gown when your hands is oily or greasy or wet or especially if you're dealing with silk which is a bit complicated to deal with so it's very important to keep your hands clean and soft and free from accessories like if you have a ring that's really sharp um, you can take it out 
because it's gonna catch up especially if it's a lace gown or let's say chiffon or ganza those are um, uh, little sensitive fabrics and of course since we're working from home we make sure that our doors kitchen doors or like our alteration room is closed uh, because of course when we're cooking dinner you know the the air is gonna just flow everywhere and we don't want the smoke to go into the gown and of course there are there's like a garment bag and it, it has to be in a garment bag and if you have pets make sure that your alteration room is exclusively only for the seamstress only for you no pets no kids allowed in the room of course for also for safety purposes and for the safety of the gown <laughs> and of course when i have a booking i make sure that the mini studio is clean it smells good i put some candles and some flowers <laughs> you know just to make it a little bit presentable and i know like when there's no client i know my kids would like put all their stuff all over in the, this mini studio so i make sure that it's all free from clutter and just take them out and for safety also it's very important to like right now it's winter and there's a lot of snow so it's very important to clear the pathway put some salt um, proper lighting where the clients would pass through in going through your house so you can start small, you can start slow. And also I have my other video on how to start without a capital. Like if you wanted to do sewing business at home and if you don't have capital, if you don't have money and you don't want to go to the bank and, you know, take a loan, you just want to do it yourself slowly but surely, check out my video. I have that um, just sharing from my experience. I'm not an expert uh, in business or something like that, but based on my experience, it is really slow but it's sure there are more tips but um that's all i can remember for now all right guys so thank you so much everyone for watching i hope that you find this video informative especially if you're someone who's into bridal alterations or maybe someone who wanted to do sewing and right now marikar studio is open for bridal alterations I am located in Brampton. I'm close to the mall, the Bramley Mall. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone uh, for taking your time watching the video. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about bridal alterations, um, sewing, some designing, and more about creating dresses, you know, something about creativity. And I hope that I will see you on my next vlog. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Have a great day and goodbye. See you later. <sighs> okay, so so I've got some tips and so I've got some simple tips. And so I've got some simple tips. And so I've got some simple tips with um, bridal alteration. And and so I've got some simple tips with uh, undoing uh, bridal alteration. Sure.